Hello, everyone, and welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy, Ivorian Spice, and welcome to the Catch Up Volume 34. Another week, Manchester United winning the Manchester, Manchester Derby. Sorry, guys. Yes, it's been a good weekend for us Manchester United fans. Yes, apart from the sloppy two points that we dropped against Crystal Palace, it's been a decent week for Manchester United in general. But of course, guys, as always, we've got my two boys with me. We've got Jags, we've got our milk boys. Jags, what are you saying? I'll complain after beating our rivals 2-0 yesterday. I'm very well, thank you. And I'm up, bro. What are you saying, bro? Of course, I'm happy, you know. I'm all right. After yesterday, come on. Can't stop smiling in that. So, yeah. I know, guys. And of course, guys, if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe, smash that like button. Remember to share because sharing Ivor and Spice is caring. And if you're new to this channel, guys, and of course, if you're new to the show, this is the popular opinion. Of course, we speak about the latest and hottest debate going on in Manchester United. And of course, we reflect on the game that just went by. We, of course, will be talking about the game against Manchester City. And of course, we're going to dive in against the Premier League Roundup, match week 28, game of the week, match preview against AC Milan on Wednesday, and ending off with the match preview against West Ham on Sunday. We go straight into that game, that Manchester derby. Noisy neighbours being hushed at the empty head, of course, with their record-breaking attendance of nobody at the stadium, of course, because it's an empty stadium as always. Yes, I'm so pleased for us to get a result against Manchester City. Oli... Again, proving miracles again, just like the Undertaker, always rising, just when he's about to be in the dead, you know, just when you're about to put the final nail on the coffin, all he sticks his hand out and says, nah, I'm still alive. It was a week where he was supposed to be, you know, rumours about him getting sacked, you know, not getting a new contract. But now that he's won, of course, he's got a lifeline. But yet, us Manchester United, we are pleased with the resort itself. With Manchester United, Playing counter-attacking football, the same as always, the usual. <laughs> but it worked against Pep. Pep getting scored once again by Oli. And Oli's right now is smiling at Pep, looking at Pep. Like, I said, I've beaten you about four times right now so far. And you've only probably got, like, one or two wins. Guys, Jax, what are you saying about that Manchester Derby victory? Um, it was a very, it was a very surprising day, you know, because you know I text you saying I've had a great weekend and United are about to spoil it. By yeah, I know. You know <laughs> me. I wasn't comfortable and I wasn't confident going into that match, but hey, I thought it was going to get pumped. Hey. Exactly, same here. And um, the boys were surprising. It was a good start, very good start. And I must say, Martial had a good game, although of course he assisted for the penalty, but he didn't score a goal. But every single thing, everything else he done was great. So he had a very good game. I was going to give him man of the match, but it has to go down to Luke Shaw for me because Luke Shaw, once again, was exceptional. Uh, give me the man of the match already, bro. Calm down. <laughs> uh, I have to give it to him quickly, bro, because I know you're going to ask me anyway. I have to give it to him. He was the main guy for us. Um, I'm very happy with his performance. Uh, the whole team played well. Henderson, Maguire and Lindelof, those three at the back, solid. It was a predictable performance. We were always going to sit back and counter-attack, but it was just down to whether or not we could take our chances and keep that clean sheet, and we did it. One out of eight. Is that the first win out of eight now or seven against the big team? So That's the first <laughs> win. That is the first win in those big six games. I'm happy, but it just feels like it's a bit too late, you know? But yeah. let me not complain too much. It's three points. And I'm up, bro. What are you saying about the game that Manchester Manchester Derby victory, bro? How, how did you? What can you tell me about that game, bro? I, I was excited about the three point bet than anything else. And another thing I was excited about was this what Jake just mentioned, Martel. Just because we've been sticking it up for the past three to four weeks now, saying he's been getting uh, um, was a good donkey of the match. You get what I mean? Like all these past weeks. So for him to come up yesterday with that type of play. That was excellent. I want to see him like that. And that's why he's my favorite player. 
when it's like this, I don't care if you don't score, but he can bring people in and it's actually good with that. So like, it was a very good game for us, but like you just mentioned, we cannot be playing with just hoping to get counters. Some teams might work, some teams might not work. Mm -hmm. I'm not going mm -hmm. to criticize the guys about yesterday because they gave they made me have a wonderful weekend. You know what I mean? Because they did well. But that performance mm -hmm. against City, see, I can slightly say that it was unlucky. They didn't get the chances, they didn't take the chances because they created a lot of chances. They had probably 60% of the boot. Good point. So, like, mm -hmm. that's just proof what we've been saying. Only going to these big games, hoping for counters and get the get to nick the games which we did yesterday. But rather than the two chances that we created, that we got, maybe in the first half, we got like one or two shots. In the second half, we got exposed more. We, did, we got the ball a little bit more. But yeah. there wasn't really nothing in the match that got me excited, rather than the, the, the two goals. It's just see how Sam plays played yesterday. That I can give them that. Obviously, in moments, of course, Manchester United playing the game in moments. Anthony Marshall, fantastic game. Although he didn't score, Still, it's what he did overall in the games that what pleased everyone. He did get met, um, the Sky Sports Man of the Match, of course. But still, you know, we had Luke Shaw who played tremendously well. Those two, fantastic as always. What do we have mm -hmm. to say about those performances before Marshall? I thought that Marshall, of course, he was, he was well. He done well. He should have scored. There was an opportunity where I thought, oh, again, Marshall, this is what people yeah. target yeah. you. You should have scored that. That's the only thing he, his performance was missing. Uh, wait, he, he had he a, thought, maybe he thought it was offside, didn't it? But the more mm, just take a chance. The ball, nah. the ball, it was a given. It was a given. It was a simple but, chance, still, but it was his a simple chance. Make, makes up for it, isn't it? Yeah, but that's the thing. He should take those chances because, again, that's what people people start targeting and saying, This is the reason why I doubt Marshall. This is why he shouldn't be number nine. And he was having a fantastic game, but he should have scored. He should have scored, fam. He should have. Should have. With Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw. Yeah, man. Luke Skywalker. Right, Luke, Luke Skywalker. What's your what's the your reaction? The force I was laughing so hard. You see the sauce that the, the force is with him, isn't it? Like he just came up. It's, we expected this though, because when we signed him, this is the reason why we signed Luke Shaw. He is looking you know, like the like, Luke Shaw that was reason. under Bang Hao. Now, this is the look show that we all need. So, him putting up this uh, performances, I'm pleased. I'm really pleased. And yesterday, he did everything excellent, everything perfect. Even going forward. We mentioned last season, you said he was scared to go forward. He's scared mm -hmm. just because he don't want to get injured. Yeah. This guy don't care. This season, you know, done, bro. He's dribbling, bitch. Like, no. Like, I hope this, like, like we've been seeing for the past few weeks. We hope this performance continue from Luke Shaw because no matter what we've seen, that no matter what the team going through this season, when Luke Shaw's on things, he's always given us that little edge, that little edge to go out there and do something amazing. And that's good for him, though. That's really good for whatever Oli and his team are doing towards these players. He we haven't seen at the best for certain time and coming back to that normal players that we always fell in love with, like Luke Shaw, for example. Because he's been at this team for a very long time now. Like, we knew the qualities that he's got. And thank God he's showing us. Thank yes. God he's showing us. I Jax, well, I want to ask you one question. What's the difference between this Luke Show and Luke Show before and, and then Luke Show now? Or, what, is he, what is it with Luke Show now? <laughs> he's fit now. You know, we've always had doubts about his fitness. We've seen it, albeit the time he broke his leg 18 months ago, 24 months ago. That was a, a deep one, isn't it? But yeah. he's always had muscle fatigue, muscle this, hamstring this, hamstring that. So I personally, I want to hold my hands up. I didn't have faith in this guy. I thought, yes, I've seen the exceptional things he can do, but I doubt he can do it on a consistent basis. And I'm so happy that he's proven me wrong. The difference is that he's keeping fit. He's keeping fit and the hunger and the desire is there. Very lastly, my man Tellers has come. Last season, he had Brandon Williams behind him. As much as I do rate Brandon Williams, he, he may not be at that level to, to compete with Shaw yet in terms of both being key players. 
Shaw can get jobs for Tellers now mm-hmm. if Shaw was to dip off form. But Shaw, this guy, man, for me, he might even be, if he continues, Bruno's a given, but Shaw might be my player of the season, you know? If he continues to the end of this season, Shaw might win it for me. We're sure bumming up and up the weight and, and just up and down the straight middle pair number 10 role, more judge should the second half. It's just a shame that he didn't have the coach that would tell him when to make the right pass because I was like, oh, sure, pass, man, pass, 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 because he kept on getting forward and forward and forward. The opportunities were there. But again, it's a shame that he's not under the right coach to tell him when to make those passes because I see that as a, a good asset yeah, for Luke Shaw's game, you know, a good trait as well. Just bumming down that left going forward or going through that middle charging and then making that key pass. And with that, resulting into a goal. I see that happen in the future, but it's just that <laughs> who's in charge of whatever's in the training pitch um, will happen. I disagree with that one, you know. Bro, I I, you have to agree with me because look at Mark always, Rashford. Look at Mark I don't Rashford. have to agree. <laughs> I don't have to agree. The, the example is we have Mark to... Rashford runs into things, no one's telling him what to do. Bruno Fernandes mm. giving the ball away sloppily, no one's advising him to stop that. I don't like that. Daniel James running... I'm in deep No one's telling him. Let this. me... Okay. Can, mm-hmm. I give, can I tell you why? Go to. Remember when Mourinho was there and there was a game where... He was literally he came out to the media and said, I was literally, Shaw was on the pitch. I was literally just telling him what to do for 90 minutes. Like, it wasn't Shaw playing. It was Shaw's body and my mind, basically. You're proving my point right now. I just want to tell you that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Go on. That's, that's, that's not how football should be played. Of course, this instruction is there, can make up 60% of it. But within that 60 the rest of it is down to your intuition. There's going to be moments where it's a split one second decision. You can't just always think back to what you've been told. It's a mixture of both, but for me, I can't say that Oli hasn't trained man to pass in a certain way. For me, that doesn't make sense. It's taking too much blame away from the players, if anything. I wouldn't agree with that one, though. I'm sorry. What are you, Amok? Yeah, I, I'm in the middle on this one because I'm with you, Jax. I understand what you're saying. It's to the player, your personal discretion, intuition, right? To do certain things. But at the same time, I've just made an example. It was just made an example by Mourinho. Yeah. But when you had to tell the players, but I'm with you, everyone's surprised with this one. We've got a manager. Even yesterday when he was winning, the only time he got off his set was when we scored the second goal and he jumped. It's always like this. So when you see players <laughs> making these mistakes and your manager sitting there doing this, folding foot and hands like this, what do you do? You are there by yourself. You, every decision you take or make, it's up to you. Because you don't have proper instructions coming from the from 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 the touch line. Do you mean some game instructions or like training instructions? Both, no, James. I mean, if you've anything, game, game, oh, I'm not talking about yeah. training. I'm talking about games. Oh, in game games, instructions. That's what I yeah. To the Oli doesn't have that. I agree with you. Oli don't have in game. So, yeah, definitely. So no. with you, when you see everyone aspect, that's where I got to agree with you. Because Oli don't do what other managers do. After you see Pep, Klopp, you see these great managers. They might be winning three goals, but they're still doing this. The anger is still there. Only the only time Oli got up yesterday was when we scored the second goal. And I saw him jumping up. I was like, but get up and get instructions. Because sometimes they are there. And I was even saying something yesterday. We might not see this, but because we're not in the football stadium ourselves. We're watching football on TV. We're watching football from a different angle. We're seeing the perfect angles. You get what I mean? These people sitting in the stadium are not seeing these angles that means you get the opportunity to see. They go, they go watch these angles after the matches. So, Oli, that's when you go and get up that seat and stand up next to that line and give instructions. You can't be sitting there folding your hands all the time. I'm not with that. I'm not with that. You can't Can do that. I'll one thing to that. that. Imagine, Oli, imagine Oli now. Imagine Bruno's listening to Oli's instructions. Do you think Bruno will be doing what he's doing? No. Sometimes it's just down to individual brilliance on top of what you've been told, you know? He will stop doing some of the stuff that he's he's been doing that I think annoys me. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely true. Dean Henderson as well, another player who did well in the sticks, um, you know, deputizing for David De Gea with as David De Gea has a new newborn. Congratulations to him. Mm-hmm. That Dean Henderson contesting for David De Gea's place. Some some people are saying that Dean Henderson should be mentioned as number one, especially after the game against Man City. Jegs. I know you have your take on and you have an opinion on 
Henderson and David De Gea. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll pass to you first, man. What do you think? You think that Dean Henderson should be now cementing or getting this chance to be the number one goalkeeper now that David De Gea is elsewhere for tem temporary being? And when he comes back, should he be challenging? I think he was challenging from the start of the season. That's why he was given 100k a week, you know, and that five-year contract. Um, great performance from him yesterday, something I expected, but I do not think that we should be giving him the number one just yet. De Gea, for me, needs to come in. And like I said last season, De Gea needs competition. If De Gea has two or three games in a row when he's moving mad, bring Henderson in and then let Henderson fight for the number one spot until he moves mad. But for now, I think De Gea needs to come back and take the gloves. But I'm very happy that we have a solid number two. And you, Amok, people, like I said before, people are saying that Dean Henderson should be getting the number one jersey, especially the pundits yesterday. You saw Roy Keane, you saw Graham Sooners, you saw them guys talking. Roy Keane hates the hair. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because I don't know why. Because he's British. Mm hmm. Because Dean right. Henderson is British. You know, they're bigging him up. That's everything British. that he was doing, that every small thing, every simple, small little save that is in, they praise it with more times two. But ain't this what they, so, they always say they expect of players and keepers that play for this great club? Mm -hmm. And this the performance they expect. So, like Jake mm -hmm. said before, we expected this. Mm -hmm. That's why it's their second. Romero will come there as second keeper and do the same thing. He used to keep clean sheet for us. Mm -hmm. yeah, of course. Remember, he keeps so, a lot for of clean me, sheets. This yeah. is not surprising. I'm not surprised about that performance today. What I see Anderson doing is showing us more of this and keeping, more, keeping us more clean sheets. When you get to have more clean sheets and do what he did yesterday, then we could have this conversation. But I'm not even going to lie. I think it's very too early for this conversation for the, Anderson coming to, to take the help. So if mm -hmm. that happens, he hasn't lost this form yet. He just became a new dad. He's yeah. a pretty yeah. new boy. <laughs> so, like, it's not competition. Edison knows his role. And when the hair comes back, he should be number one keeper. After a few weeks of training, definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, i tell you what, yeah. The his white woman needs to come to this country. I'm, I had enough of this. What the hell is she doing in Spain? My man has to fly. I'm not thinking, what? She's not here. This is the reason why David Hill's head hasn't been around for a couple of seasons and been moving man. This she's the reason why Real Madrid almost came calling. This woman, she's a she's a problem, you know. She's supposed to be here. What are you telling me? Like, like you're on a really long distance relationship now. Nah, they need to check her, bro. Are you sure you got her pregnant? <laughs> Are you sure you are always here, bro? She's down there. She wants you to come to Madrid. Now I trying to use the it's, baby. It's a face oh, well, thing, isn't it? Hey, James, well, it's peak out here. He might leave us. She might use the baby now. Like, come to Madrid. <laughs> You're not gonna see your no. child if, it, if if you don't come to Madrid. <laughs> it's peak out here, you know. Like, we got, we got, we got Henderson, in it? No, deep it, deep it, deep it, deep it. Because I remember Real Madrid's move. That interest it was because of his girl. Wanted to move as well because his girl wanted him to come to move. To I, was, I was just about to say Do you that. Remember, she actually ago. got the mm -hmm. seat. Yeah. So now she's got a ute. She got a ute for him now. It's Pete. Just gone. We might lose the here, fam, because of the ute, because of his thing with his, the ute, uh, bro. She's gonna pull it. I, I want to go that far. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Now I'm deep in it. I'm I'm deep in it, real deep. Bro. Do you remember okay. the the the, the Real Madrid move? She actually book went to a designer, what's it called? On um, um, what's it called? Uh, got the uh, seat just to, for the presentation. That was she the that move. Now I remember so, she she wanted to, she she was missing Spain. She doesn't like it here. She uh, she missed home. And now she's I've, got I've, more I've known a, this for years. She's got more of a pullish now. And let's move back. No, that's to true. Spain. No, I mean, I go <laughs> Let's but go back to happens, Spain. Yeah, it's like we said, we got let me go ahead and hand listen. So we can't we can't baby carry anyone that wants we, any any player that wants to United I, can go. I don't know about Henderson being ready to be mentioned as number one goalkeeper. I still felt like he should have had one more season on loan at Sheffield United or whether another good top club in the Premier League. I don't know, but yeah, he's here now. What can I say? But I don't think he's ready. The he's got so much to give us as well. He has. He still has. Mm -hmm. 
He's still, still young. Four more he's still young. He's yeah. 30, he's in what, 30, 31. He's still 31. young. 31. Keeper. You know, these keepers lost until 35. How old was Henderson when he won the Champions League with him? He, 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 he because he paid almost two. He paid almost two that he was like 36. 40 with us, right? 36. When won Champions League with him, innit? Mm-hmm. 36, yeah, 37. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See? He was the old keeper, but very intelligent and very experienced. Mm-hmm. And we won the Champions League with him. So they had to they had go for more seasons for me to show for. Yes. So, yes, definitely. With Oli, his tactics in the game as well. Quite spot on at times, you know. We always, I always thought that Oli was going to come with that counter attacking football and play Daniel James, make him become a defensive wing, winger at the same time, um, supporting Awa and Basaka. But yeah, with Oli's tactics, Amok, what did you think of Oli's tactics, Oli's tactical approach to the game? It worked yesterday, which always been working against Pep Guardiola, anyways. This is the third time he's lost to Oli in. It had since he came as became the manager of Man City. Mm-hmm. So for, for you to see that, just know that Oli knows how to put up his team against Pep. Pep plays football. Oli don't Oli will let you play like Mourinho type of football. Will let you have the ball, pass the ball around. The difference between Oli and Mourinho is Oli Oli let, gave his player permission to do whatever they want to do with the ball, but also defend. So you see when they play when we get the ball. And when we were about to attack, we got this lightning players that can do anything. So it worked against Man City yesterday. This was the same formation he used against um, 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 what's it called? um Crystal Palace. I think Wednesday, it did not work. Because these are the same players that almost started that game. It didn't work at all. So I think it worked for only this time around because it's Man City. I don't know how he's going to go into the next match, what type of statics or philosophy he's going to use. But I hope he gets to work again. But for so far, what he did, bring playing uh, James as that little friend that got pissed because I saw James run into people. But for mm-hmm. the first 20 minutes, what did James do in the game? What was his? What was James? He was playing defensive, like first defensive winger on the left, defensive left winger. And you're using the mm-hmm. wrong player to play for that position. I mean, in right winger, opinion. sorry, defensive right happened. winger. That's what he was playing. He, Using the wrong player to play that position for you, because <laughs> we need creative. I know you, you took. We took about like the, that, like we said. We went there to defend. That was the game for you to introduce Ozzy called Van der Beek. If he was not even on the on, on, on the bench, I don't I know what happened. Not there. I'm not, oh, that's what I'm saying. But that's mm-hmm. the type of game you got to give him. Van der Beek needs games. He needs chances. He needs it. It gave him chances in big games. Jags. We did not see nothing from James yesterday in the first 20 to 25 minutes of the match. I did not see nothing from James. And James, what about so, you? Um, we all expected this formation. This is what we do against all the top teams, whether it's PSG, I even say top teams, whether it's Liverpool, even if we play Arsenal, we sit back and we just counter-attack. The City is a perfect uh, tactic because that. The way in which they can hold and create chance, hold the ball and create chances, we <clears throat> we don't we can't match them. So we do need to sit back and assess the situation and try to pick them off off the counter attack. But the fact that we've only won one in seven or eight from the top teams, this is not the tactic we need to be using. Exactly. Not at all. Let's because not, not everyone is City. Everyone else against Liverpool, we bottled it. We should have won that game. Yep, sure. We should have won that game. Definitely. All these other teams, we need to be trained in a way where we have confidence to keep the ball. Again, when it is a combination of training and personnel. Mm, yeah. Fred and yes. Scott. Training, personnel. Fred and, no, not Fred the and guys. Scott not are the not guys. ballers. No. To be able to have a <laughs> no. 60 to 70% possession rate. They're not no. the guys for They're that. Not. So not. if we want to be moving to these teams, we need more of the ball and we need to be creating more chances. We can't sit back concede 14 attempts on goal, have only six, and win the game all the time. That's true. So That works, not... that works for Ali. And like, that works for Ali. I don't know if you guys saw, the the, the, the board came out the other day to put Ali, because they think they've seen progress it's, in the club. Yeah, they, they do that. It's annoying. I'm, I, when I saw that, I was annoying. Right. 
But we'll see what happens in the, in the summer, whether they, they give him a new contract or keep him. They mm. could just be saying it just for talking or just for business reasons. But apart from that, you never know. Like, I'm but you don't agree, though? Has he not? Since, um, remember that Everton... Wait, 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 let me finish. That Everton game, when they were about to sack him, have yeah. we not progressed since then? Are we not second in the league? Again, we with Ali, I've seen the same thing again. Up and down roller coasters. That's what it is for us. Just that we're in a better position. You, we are just in a better position right now in the league. Uh, Otherwise, have we progressed uh, or not? Progressed? No, I think since we're the same. No, okay, since fair enough. since the same since since okay. the same. With fair Everton, enough. what do you mean by Everton when we was like? Remember that game against Everton, and he was. I think it was in December. He was going to get sacked if we lost against Everton that time. Yeah, and yeah then I remember, we won. I oh, when we was like 18th in the league. Well, yeah. Do you not remember when? Yeah, Bobby we had progress. Look. We're second right yeah. now, but look mm-hmm. at this. We could have been first so though. many times. Like it's, mm-hmm. I, I'm tired of this up and down roller coaster where but, we play good for one particular moment and we play bad, we play good and we play bad. Like we need a manager. What's the progression? What's the progression though? What the progression, the progression is that we're second right now until we yeah, never know. Until we <laughs> never know. We might slip up. We might end up third. We might end up third. Why was you seeing the 16, 17, 18? Why was that? We had a bad start. But let's let's let me. He was the on. manager. Oli, let me move on from Oli because we, I don't want it to be about just Oli. Man of the match and don't give the match for you, man. In that match, and let me, let me start off straight up. My man, of the match, of course, was Luke Shaw. Sky Skywalker, Walker. force with you. Don't give the match, Bruno Fernandez. Of course, he did score, but I don't care. He played rubbish the whole game. He had opportunities to give us opportunity to score a goal and just keeps making the wrong decision and this all the time thinking fizzing things so quickly yeah without just assessing the situation and calm down like with some of your passes but apart from that he has to be don't give the match for me man he's he's been playing poor recently don't um bruno fernandez he's been playing poor regardless of scoring he's been playing poor what about you jegs because we know who's your man in the match already <laughs> of course, yeah. Uh, Link Shaw. Um, I think that's a bit harsh about Bruno, you know. He wasn't that bad yesterday. No, but he was bad, bro. I'll he give my one. He was bad. Fair enough. It's, it's fair enough. I'll give mine to DJ. Daniel James didn't do, do much for me. I don't know why he started <laughs> that game. I told you, Oli to does this all the time. Like, he, he, he slowly brings it back into you. Like, you know, he, he, we all know he's dead, but he likes him. He just wants to bring him back in. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you said don't. I don't. <laughs> what about you, Amok? Who was your... Oh, my man of the match would definitely be Mattel. My man of yeah. the match would definitely be Mattel. I felt like... Because I've given Duncan the match for probably three weeks in a row. So him doing what he did yesterday for me was excellent. Like, this is the reason why I like him. It, it, it might be funny to say this, but he's actually my favorite player in the world. That's how bad it is, not just for United. I like yeah. to see someone. I'm being mean, honest. No, I have to look at you funny I'm, like I'm, this. I'm not being honest. That's my, he's my, my favorite player in the world. <laughs> not because of ability. There's just something about this guy that I've seen from, from the very first day. When he plays, he's on point. Like, you bring Messi, bring Ronaldo, bring anyone. For me, the only player that he plays like similarly is Hazard. It's Hazard. When Hazard was in the Premier League, I always said Hazard is better than him a little bit. But Martial, on, mm. when he's on point, he's the best player for me in the world. I don't care. He bring bring any player. But the thing why right. he's not consistent with this. Mm. Consistency yep. is his biggest issue. So for yesterday, thumbs up. And my donkey of the play, but donkey of the match would definitely be DJ. Yeah, for me, he was he was just clueless in the match. He was not where to be. I can't I didn't even know what if you want to use defenders. Oli, please improve on the defensive defensive tactics. Try and bring, you got transfer, you got someone else. I know you're trying to go forward, you try trying to stay defensive minded, but you got, you, you point giving us someone that can't do both. He can't go forward. <laughs> the little stuff just run. Yeah, I know. That defensive no, yeah. winger, that's what you call it. New position. Why, like, stop doing it, Oli. Stop. Just stop. Like you said, it. he shouldn't make us like this kid. I said it to you from, I can't remember, the beginning of the season. Only like this kid. 
So if Oli's going to use this kit, I want to see the better version of DJ. Not yeah. this version. Yeah. Not this. DJ, they need to lock him in a phone box for five hours or five days. Just tell him, just do kick up. Practice your close control. Just... He's not a baller for me. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be harsh. Do you know that someone's player. They call him a road runner, you know. He is a road runner. Meet me. Like, he just only really just, just run. Just... To be fair to him, like you boys have been saying, because I've been getting on to him for since he came. Mm-hmm. But he's young, so he can still improve, isn't it? Yeah, he he's improve. young. That's the funny thing. He, he reminds me of Bell. Bell. Well, Gav Bell was better of the ball than him. But they got similar attribute. All they did was run up people. But Gareth nah. was good on the ball. Gareth Bale would dribble you. Gareth Bale was actually good and he knows how to turn with the pace. But DJ, done, he's not good on the ball. That's the only thing. Like he said, needs to be locked in the room and tell him to do these simple things. He's not good on the ball. But if he was good on the ball, for me, it's, it's Gareth Bell. They run at you like it's fun. He got the pace, which is actually good with But controlling the ball is his biggest issue. Okay, guys, we move it straight on to the Premier League roundup. And of course, my favorite part of the game, which is game of the week. My favorite part of the show, sorry, which is game of the week. Uh, we've had our, you know, ups as well. Liverpool ha, losing 1 0 against Fulham at Anfield. Caution, guys. Let me tell you right now, guys. If you are driving anywhere near Anfield, let me tell you now, they're giving away free points. So be careful. Do not drive anywhere near Anfield because they're giving people free points regardless. <laughs> God, don't go there, bro. You'll get free points automatically for fun, for free as well. Yeah. We're Liverpool losing one year against Fulham. Six games at home. Six straight defeats. you got... Arsenal drawing 1-1 against Burnley at Burnley. Spurs winning 4-1 against Palace, who we drew, which makes me sick that everyone else is packing this team in. 7-0 Liverpool. Man City packed them in. Spurs go there, pack them in. We can't pack them in. Pisses me off. This is why I say we should be better than where we are. Well, in Chelsea, Chelsea just winning 2-0 right now. You know, it's been a good week for them. It's been a bad week for Liverpool. We go straight into that Liverpool game. Guys, Liverpool losing 1-0. A decent game. I I did watch that game, um, Liverpool. I just don't know what's going on with Liverpool. I actually don't know what's going on. This is the champions, guys. The Premier League, the best, again, I'll say again, the greatest Premier League team that's ever graced. The Premier League ever, you know? Okay, I'm just <laughs> laughing. No, I just love it. I said they're stats. They're, they're fifth or sixth right now, right? Seven, <laughs> okay, seven. This is the it's champions, fair. you know. Have you ever eight. seen this in life? A, a they're eighth. They're eighth. Eighth, you see? Mm-hmm. I honestly would be nice to them. <laughs> they're eighth. Wow. I've never seen this. I know we fell off when we won the Premier League and got Moyes, and then boom. When we wasn't dubbed the greatest, we was we was told that we was falling off. Like our team was not the best when we won that Premier League, but they oh, still came seventh. Yeah, I know, but that's not that's not the same thing. They was dubbed the greatest ever team, and look at them now, guys. What's going on with Liverpool right now? We did not lose that much points as Liverpool right now. They 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 won the Premier League team that lost that much points mm-hmm. from how many points they won the league with with the point they're losing right now. It's ridiculous. So, I feel like Liverpool needs to dig. And find himself again. Most of the players haven't found themselves. Um, most people, most of the media is actually is critique. I could agree with that because if you see Liverpool last season or the season before last, these players were like non stop motto. He just moving. They were chasing down every single ball. They were energetic. The team had so much, I don't even know how to say it. But it's compared to Liverpool last season to this, then it, it's clearly visual that the energy of the players last season, we ain't seen that same energy this season. Oh, we don't know if it's management or fatigue, oh, no. but as a, as a fan, point of view, I don't want to be biased. As much as it, I enjoy seeing them suffer, and I never want, I never want to see them smile, but I could just say it's fatigue. They played too many games. 
Yeah, but we've all had. We're in the same boat. Right there is no excuses. Jags, what do you, what no, do you have to say? They, we that? did not do what they did. They um, played like they wanted to win every single game. They played every single game like it was the last game for them. We haven't played like that. We don't put in them type of work that Liverpool done in the we past four seasons. We don't put we don't. in that effort, you're right. So Liverpool actually put in the effort. So for them to be the way they're playing, I do understand the club needs to find themselves. It's actually getting worse for them. But for me, as a fan point of view, it's fatigue. Jags, what do you have to say? What is going on down there, man? And what do you think about that result? Um, it's surprising to see Liverpool lose six games on a bounce at Anfield. This place was a fortress not too long ago, you know? Mm-hmm. Nobody could go to Anfield and pick up a point. For me, it's down to Klopp. I think, like, Klopp has lost the way of motivating the players at the moment. He came out and said that they're no longer looking at the title. It's all about top four. And I right. think that coming yeah. out and saying that, the players, their heads even dropped more. They were like, do you know what? Yeah, let, if anything, we're definitely going to get into the top four. We're not going to win the league now. I ain't going to do my extra running or I'm not. The motivation is there. Uh, has left them, sorry. Um, it's all down to whether Klopp can get it back now. What words can he bring out to... to motivate these players to, to actually get into that top four because as we speak now they're eight Who's if Aston Villa win their game in hand yeah. they're ninth they become ninth so Klopp needs <laughs> he needs a speech of all speeches to get these boys back into here Tottenham got to give him a hand you know so he's going to be able to peak guys do you think Klopp is happy right now or is he happy at Liverpool does he, does he want to go? Does he want to leave or something like that? I think he's, no, he's, not the same. he's not the same. I don't know. Do you think he's really happy? Do you he's not happy, happy like last season happy, but he's no. happy because just because he got a job and he's managed one of the so-called great, one of the so-called greatest clubs, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Like he he came, he gave them something that they have. Is he happy at Liverpool? They're unable to spend money, they've got problems there, and they, he's mourned a couple of times as well, especially for if it was not. He's one of the managers that he, they're not happy about certain things. They voice it out. He's like, just like Mourinho in terms of voicing things out. When he came to the club, he made he said everything he was going to do. And he executed everything that he said he was going to do. So don't you think if he was not happy, he would have mentioned something? Like, we all know what's going on. It's just one season. But if the same thing happened the following season, then I can put a finger the manager, say maybe the manager will go think about himself and what he's bringing onto the table. But it's just one season after they won the league. So let's give there's still chance for them to do something. But I'm with what the manager said though, that we just just mentioned. I rather tell someone the truth and motivate you even better if you want to go win the title. But just be realistic and just to be real, tell him the truth. Say, I don't think you might win this league this season. Mourinho said it yesterday. He told his team that I was happy that you lot lost. Uh, you lot considered one good with the goal just for the the the, the the, the, the first to finish and mentally that disturbed the players. See, why is he happy that we can see that? So they came out back showing different color. So, like I said, things this one just say stuff to motivate players or so just to say something in a fun way for let these players to know that oh, that's the one to see the best out of you. I rather you say that than saying something else to be interesting. Jace, do you have anything to say regarding um Jurgen Klopp? Do you do you feel like um, he's happy or is What's going Simple on? question. No, of course he's not happy. Bro, how give you be happy? You won the, the Premier League, now you're, you're eighth or ninth. Of course he's not happy. For me, sometimes he can be a bit of a sore loser, but I feel like those managers that demand the most are the types to be sore losers. So that's to be expected. Mm-hmm. Um, I think also, again, People use COVID as an excuse for things, but with this season that we have been coupled with the Liverpool's performances, of course he's not going to be happy. Whether he wants to leave, that's a different question. I don't think so. I feel like it's way too early to want to leave. You just won the Champions League, won the Premier League, you've fallen off and you want to give up now? No way. Klopp it down, no way. He'll be back next season and we'll see a bit more of him. <laughs> well said. With your boy, Jex, you see Spurs winning 4-1. Your boy, Gareth Bale, scoring two goals. Harry Kane scoring two goals as well. As it, yeah, they both scored two goals, yeah. Double brace. Mm-hmm. Double brace. Mm-hmm. Bale got that brace back-to-back. But I didn't even watch the game. I can't guess. 
I'm gonna go watch the highlights later. But... Oh, we should. Oh, you missed that. Bell, I watched the match. Nah, I watched Bell the start, whole match. Bell scored. I watched the whole match. Tell me about it, Amo. Kane scoring it was a, a good great match. goal. It was a good match. You know what I mean? It was a good match. You saw that goal. Kane's goal. That goal. No. Um, Kane goal is the best goal of the season. I don't care what anyone got to say. Harry Kane's goal. It's just a few players you can... He can think score goals like that. For me, the only player that came on my head yesterday was Rooney. Mm-hmm. That's the really type of goal. Really just for Rooney. Did he, did he just smash it in? Did he, what, uh, yard, not yeah? smash. Like, finessed it from way outside. You know when okay. the pass the ball, the ball dropping, he's just mm-hmm. finessing it. Okay. Like, no, no, it was... The only players that score like this, Rooney, that's the only player I think that... Because Rooney got tackles. Rooney got tackles. But even Reking said it, it's only ball class players that can do something like that. Mm-hmm. It was a, that goal was immaculate. But I'm happy one of the Bell, Bell, mm-hmm. Bell, Bell was getting back on his stride, and I'm happy to see him. Like we were right about his fitness, because Mourinho mentioned something, saying when he got to 65 minutes, 60, 60, 65 minutes, they had eye contact. He's asking him, are you still fit enough to carry on some more minutes? Mm-hmm. And they did that. Yeah. And I felt like, for me, that's a good way of managing. Because you know your player's body. You turn it Because this player is one of... If you can keep him fit, mm-hmm. trust me, he's going to be one of the best players in the Premier League. Hands down, we all know this. He's going to compete with every single player that's been busting in the Premier League. If you keep Gabriel fit. But he's going to be fit. Is Gabriel always fit? That's the question, yeah. Uh-huh. He ain't fit, bro. I'm joking. He is. He's, he's <laughs> getting there now. Nah, I he's see that. There, but... He was doing things, especially he was. He was. He played really well. You know, was okay. really good. involved. I, he was really involved against Palace. I'm just upset that Palace folded like that again. Yeah, but when it's us, they always turn up. With Arsenal drawing one one against Burnley, Granite Shaka we don't know what he was doing there. Right? <laughs> like, we don't know what the hell was Granite Shaka. Right. Who was he passing to? Because I thought you were trying to pass that. Is that Granite? Granite, Jean- that Granite guy. Whatever. You know, I'm laughing. It's mm-hmm. I'm done. I'm not talking. I'm going to walk off his interview, you know? <laughs> Trips. He walked off his interview. Oh, did you watch it? Did you watch it? Hey, oh, send me the link. <laughs> I already he sent it. Like you loser. I already sent you the link. <laughs> oh, is it? When? Yeah. Yes, okay, I'll watch Dave. it. You <laughs> walked off. I'll watch it. I'll watch it. Him and Ty. I'm about to say Ty, you know. Him and um, what's called, um, what's called Chief Keith. What's his name? <laughs> like, um, um, what's his name, bro? Zaza, 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 yeah, Zaza, yeah. Ah, they, they even had an argument at the end, <laughs> like going back at the end, they were like back and forth. <laughs> but yeah, Shaka for me, who would you bro. blame though? I remember Shaka, who would you blame? Shaka for that goal, who would you blame? Of course, Shaka, bro. Shaka didn't need to take a touch one one time. I have to sit back to the keeper, Look, you don't even need to hit to the keeper. keeper. You don't need to give it to the keeper. One touch to your left, those players there. Why did he take a touch and then kick it at the man? No, nah, you're a professional. Shaka makes, I was just going to say, Shaka, if I was an Arsenal fan, I'd want this guy gone. Because he does the regular stuff calm, but he makes too many mistakes. In a season, he'll make 10 or 15 mistakes. That costly to go. mistakes, not just mistakes, costly mistakes. Costly mistakes mistake that makes you lose games and lose or drop points. And he will get stupid red cards. Red cards, true. This guy, I don't know. But it was a good game, very good game. The last 10 minutes, Arsenal were on to um, Burnley. How they didn't score, I do not know. Off the line, they hit the crossbar. Pepe missed the sitter. Like, there were so many chances, but great game to watch. Great game. I liked it still, man. But let's move it straight up to the game of the week. Of course, my favourite part of the game. My game of the week, of course. We're seeing Liverpool lose again. One new at home, you get me? This bloody Liverpool scar. I, I want to put a scarcer action, but I can't, bro. Just to mock the thing. But I just enjoy it, bro. <laughs> Trying to mark it. Six home defeats. The greatest team in the Premier League history. Out here suffering. I mean, that's not my shoulder, man. That's just them. Suffering. That's loud talk. That's loud talk. 
You know, giving out a free points for free, but we can't even get three points. I'm telling you right now, even if we pass in the double A online, you Liverpool won't give us those three points. I'm telling you right now. Yeah, because we can't do things properly. I'm disappointed that we couldn't get that win at Anfield. I'm so disappointed, but it is what it at is. The worst. They were so vulnerable. Everyone is having. They were so vulnerable that day. Everyone Liverpool was at having... the worst. Like I don't get it. Liverpool giving out three points. We're out here giving out draws. Like us, I don't. I don't get it. James, what about you? What was your game of the week? Um, it's going to be that Arsenal Burnley game. You know, mm. I remember watching that. It was a very exciting game. Arsenal put it onto Burnley in the second, like towards the end of the second half. And I was surprised that Arsenal couldn't come back and score. Good game. Shaka lost them the game. Boy, Arsenal won, Burnley won. <laughs> hey. And what about you, Amok, bro? What was your game of the week? My game of the week got pretty United game, man. Like, I can't, you know, I don't get it that much. So I've got to give it to United. They put in great shapes. Players that were underperforming for me actually did the bits. So United deserve much appraisal this week because we've drawn a lot the past few weeks. I, I actually like the game. I like this second half of the game more just to see people players doing what they've got to do. And whatever Oli told them in the first half, I think they came out of the second half with more maybe winning mentality. The difference between Manchester yesterday in Manchester for the past four weeks, it's yesterday they looked like they wanted the game more than how much they wanted the game. But all the other games that I've seen them, they didn't want the match, and that's why Granny did true. So yesterday I give thumbs up to United yesterday, man. No problem. Guys, do let us know what you thought of the game against Man City. And also let us know what you thought of the old game of the week. Let us know as well of the Premier League round of, of match week 28. Moving straight into the match previews, we've got Manchester United playing against AC Milan on Wednesday Europa League. Guys, straight away at Old Trafford, I definitely think that Manchester United should get this win against AC mm-hmm. Milan. We won't mm-hmm. be seeing Zlatan Ibrahimovic because he's injured. So I've got the confidence that we can get, get the result that we want at Old Trafford and beat them again for the following week. AC Milan ain't the team that it was before, although they got some good players, mm-hmm. still win. James, what about you? What did you what do you think? Uh a big big blow for AC. Zlatan's out. That's their main man up top, you know. Um AC Milan, albeit they are second in the Serie A behind Inter, they are chasing. But Inter smoked them 3-0 not long ago. Mm-hmm. And the way Inter picked them apart. I can see our attack doing something very similar. And I don't want to see no counter-attacking football, whether it be at San Siro or Old Trafford. We need to press them. So we should win. And I'm three, up, bro. 3-4-0. Three, 3-4-0. Four, nil. Three, four, nil. Three, four, nil. Me, I'm yep, thinking 2-0. Yep. But what about you, Amok? A definite win, though. We need, we need to win against um, AC Milan. Like you guys just mentioned it. We, we're not trying to discredit the club itself. But... They, they're not the they similar that we used to know. And obviously, they're doing very good in the league. They're doing, they're doing bits. I've watched a few games this season. They got not just Abramovich. They got a few players. They got players that can just do magic. And they actually, I think they changed the keeper. They got a new keeper for where the new keeper's name. He's decent. Not the Naruma. The Naruma is number one no more. It's just some next guy. He's actually decent. So I think we just go, go in there. Obviously, the first leg is going to be at Old Trafford. Get the free point and see what happens the following week. Is go over to San Siro and do what we gotta do, but definitely win. Like I didn't want to face AC Milan at this time of the state at this stage of the competition, but knowing that we're facing them, just kick the take them off and face the is gonna come next. But we it's not just gonna be an easy walkover. It's gonna be a hard match for us because these are the AC Milan. These are European clubs. They know how to play European competition. They might not be in there, but they got that magic. This is not just any random club. This is AC Milan and they're playing a Europa competition. That's Europe. They love Europe competition. Like we, I'm just saying. Yes, um, we're definitely confident about that, that we should get that win. Moving into the next preview, we've mentioned that playing West Ham. At 7.15 on Sunday. Guys, make sure you catch that 
West Ham, we've had problems with them. We have beaten them recently, not a long ago, especially in the FA Cup. So, again, in the Premier League, it's at home, and we don't have the best records at home at times. I'm not going to say that I, I'm confident because it's a back to the Premier League again because it's different from the Europa League. Yeah, West Ham's a tough team, and West Ham have, have been in good form. So, you know, I hope that we'll get the win. I just hope that we'll get the win. Simple as, get beat those hammers and make sure that we burst their bubbles because we, they can't be out here singing forever blowing bubbles in our stadiums. Those bubbles will burst, you get me? Jags, man, what are you saying, fam, about that game against West Ham? Um, West Ham, there are boogie. That's the boogie side for us, you know. I don't know why. West Ham are always a tricky opponent for us. Um, I would like to say that we should win that game. Lingard won't be starting, hopefully, because of the loan deal structure, how it works out. But um, I, I don't know. I'm not confident. I'll go with the win, but I'm not confident. What about you, more quickly before we end the show? Yeah, no. It's going to be a tricky match. I hope we can go and get the three point. We just believe we should get the three point. It's just going to be a tricky match. Very tricky match. All he needs to bring his best. All he needs to do something. Because like Jack said, it's, it's a place that we always go and we struggle. And they know how to be us now. Everyone like, in the, the, the yeah. form they're in right now, they're in good form. So we go think twice and only go really bring out the best of his players and give them the, the right tactics. And not just any tactics, but tactics that will work for this particular match. Well, of course, guys, it's looking like it will be a tricky game for us. But hopefully we get that W. Guys, we have come straight to the end of the show and it has been a good one, a good talk, a good week so far for Manchester United and hoping that we have a fabulous week this week. Guys, we end up with sh- letting the guys tell you exactly where you can find them on their socials and etc. So we start off with a MOOC. Where can the people find you? Well, they can find me on Instagram, Flaco underscore 16. And Jags, what about you? Where can the people find you? Instagram, Jags underscore United. And of course, guys, you can find me on what's it called on Red United TV as always, and also on the official Instagram account of Red United TV, which is Red United TV One. My personal Instagram, which is Ivorian underscore Spice. You get me same on the Twitter, and remember to follow the TikTok account of Red United TV, which is Red United TV. And as always, subscribe, smash that like button, and remember to share because sharing Ivorian Spice is caring. And man, shit, fans, ha. Liverpool, ha! And of course, guys, remember to keep it united as always. And remember to keep it red united because we out. Peace out.